What's up guys everybody, this is STS here now for another simple review. Now I was been doing them I was going I've been I'm doing the I was gonna do the monsters do three more episodes, but like you know, I'm just gonna do some random video or I mean random movie. So but earlier but like, um well it's now two o'clock in the morning. Almost three o'clock in the morning. So my clock says two sixteen, but it's really two forty six. But um I was at film video earlier yesterday, or two days ago, and then I seen the movie The Veil, which I already saw the the, the movie The Veil on Netflix, but it has Jessica Alba, Lily Raby, and the person with Thomas Jane, who played the Punisher. And I was like, you know, I thought I would check it out, you know. But I had the documentary thing, and I felt like, you know, this is going to be like a found footage film, which is probably going to suck, or, or maybe be entertaining. Well, in fact, it was not that kind of version of a film. It's The Veil. I don't have the film here. It was on Netflix. The Veil, it's a 2015... 2000... No, it was this year. It was January 19, 2016 film. I did not know this. Wow. And this film's going to get a shitty fucking rude because uh, this film... The thing about this... I, you know, I really want to check it out because let's just talk about it because mostly, sorry, major spoilers here, so... Bye bye if you don't want to hear about this because really this film I'm gonna talk all of I'm gonna read the whole plot here if it's on Wikipedia same because I really didn't have, didn't have fun I thought I was gonna have fun when it first started because of the mystery because it reminded me of Don't Blink sort of kind of way I just it's one of the very it's my second uh, super review I've ever done last year but really this it, let's just go on this now I'm gonna basically just talk about because basically. It's basically this is another sass. I'm gonna see if there's any like Mark and that early. The the plot. Well, first of all, before we start going to plot where it says here. Okay, good. We can read it all. Plot. This is basically a take on a cult. You know the cult release. I mean the um cult leaders. Basically, the whole Jim Jones and the, the Jonestown Massacre, what they all drink the cyanide Kool-Aid. Well, this movie's basically just off of that, but more fiction. They, they the, the cult li the cult leader is Thomas Jane, who's, who, who's played by Thomas Jane, who's, whose name is Jim Jacobs. But basically, the main plant thing was that this woman who was this baby girl or this five-year-old who was the only survivor takes this stack of mirror crew, which that's how it starts. And basically, yeah, and then they go to the place, which I'm going to read the plot soon, and all shit haywires. I mean, these deaths, they, some people disappear, There's, and then some die. Um, and then then the, the, the girl gets those hallucinations, which I'll probably read the plot here right now. But really, at the end of the day, shit. But I'm going to read down the plot, and I'll talk about the thoughts here. 25 years after the members of Heaven's Veil, a religious cult commits suicide in document Suicide. The documentary uh, American Maggie Price, which is played by Jessica Alba's character, contract contacts the soul survivor Sarah Hope to film a documentary about really what happened. Sarah, who was five years old when she was found at the scene, let's, let's see. she accepts what she uh, um, things, except when she learns that Maggie has found evidence that never. That never recovered footage exists. Maggie's Chris explains that her fire was the FBI agent who led the investigation. Shortly after discovering the mass suicide, he committed suicide, driven Maggie Christian to learn the truth. With the crew, Maggie takes Sarah to the side of the cult suicide. They shoot footage at. And also, too, one reason I did not really care about this one before I go on this fucking. The thing I did not really care for this shit was really the back and forth shit. It would go back from the day, it, I mean, back to the whole cult-like stuff, and then it went back to the present time. I was really kind of, I'm, I've been tired too, I've been, I slept through a little bit of it too. And I was like, you know, I was trying to watch something good, really good, but really was not. But it just it would go back, come back and forth, and then people have hallucinations, like, they shoot footage of Sarah's reaction to come back, and they're concerned when she collapses, overwhelmed by memories and ghostly visions, because, first of all, the only thing really good about this film is the jump scares, because they really got me jumped a little bit, but still, the it doesn't make, it still makes this movie still shit, is what it was, but the jump scares, you know, they were, the first ones were all right. After the set came for the night, Sarah wakes from a nightmare to find that the crew are looking for a grip. Ed, who has disappeared from, from the van, which he leaves, and uh, 
the sound editor did take the gaffer leaves at fine ed. The editors follow Sarah who is remember the location of the, the house hidden within the forest. Inside they find the last footage and missing cult member Karen Sweetser's deposed corpse and a tape finding her body. Karen rants about not being in control and briefly addresses Sarah before dying. On the tape. After preparing the projector, they begin watching the remaining footage and that Jim Jacobs, the leader of him, so describes how he was discovered the secret to eternal life by designing drugs with the knowledge of alchemy. He hopes to to free his followers' spirits from their bodies. They also learn that Karen is Sarah's mother. Sarah's experiences further visions, but over her, she talks to her mother, confessing that she feels conflicted about returning. And Nick return only to that Ed is dying in high speed car accidents because it's and it's pretty good gore, but I just like he was disappeared and we don't know where the fuck he came from. They watched, yeah, and also they're watching footage of when at the night of the cameras being moved and there was like some ghostly force. And this is where Ed was. Joe the senator argues they should leave, but Maggie and Sarah insist that they continue watching the tapes, which that's all they talked about too. We gotta find those tapes. We gotta watch those tapes. We have no, we have to watch those tapes. So what they're basically talking about. We have to watch those tapes. Forget, uh, if, you know, you guys can go there, but we, we're going to be here watching these tapes. And it's like, like, really, the veil, watching the tapes, a.k.a. watching the tapes, bullshit. Um, the others regularly agree. In the later tapes, Jim experiments with dangerous drugs to help him, because he keeps going to these little tapes, and I just don't really care for it. Sorry, you, got, you, may, you guys may like this. I didn't care. I was, I was really pissed off, bored. I just I kept, I kept dozing off. Um... Jim experienced between crossover and the spirit realm. During one trance, he possesses a cult of member and none that he was freed the first of the free binds of her soul. Ghosts kill Nick when he leaves to restart the house generator. He later rejoins the others and kill see that's the thing too. The ghosts kill Nick and he starts and then they have him bring back alive with the the demons or something take control of him. It's like what? Really? Fucking book is just getting quick, like, man. It's getting so dumb. And then later, when, once we get more into this story, when I read more, it just makes it even down the fucking drain. It's like, man, this is so fucking dumb. I mean, is this psychological? What is this? Hold on. It's a supernatural film, basically. That's what it says it's under. It's he later rejoins the others and kills Anna when they are alone, which that was a pretty cool kill. Anna and Nick return to Gary as they continue watching the tapes. Jim reveals further experiments in the footage when he menaces poisons to himself. He removes the second binding from his soul. Jim returns once the antidote is applied to him. After hearing Gussie whispers, the rain documentary filmmakers become convinced that the house is haunted. Jill and Matt, the cameraman, leave. Then they find Ed apparently alive. As the Jill applies first aid, Matt leaves. They get help. Jed kill Ed kills. Jill, and they return to the house. Sarah holds a, holds a sense to communicate with her mother, who demands that she entries the documentary for Mickers to stay at the house. Sarah murders Kristen. So this is it, too. Now that the chick who survived and stuff, she's killing. So she's the one probably doing all the kills, maybe, or whatnot. I don't know. Or maybe it's And they just kept going these hallucinations back and forth, these memories. It was like, ah, oh, this is such a mind fuck. And it's bullshit. It was terrible. I was so looking forward to this film, even though it got one star out of the Netflix thing, you know, if just got one stuff. But I thought this would be a pretty cool thing. But I was wrong about the fun footage thing, film. And then this, I was, it was okay at first. It was this supernatural film, but it just get fucking shit. But she murders Christians who rises and joins her to continue watching the footage with the others of all whom but Maggie are now possessed. In the final reel, Jim reveals that the poison mirrors to the cult members was supposed to be a kind of acted by the dentist. Karen objects to giving the poison to the children and allows Sarah to free it fully. Jim is revealed to be Sarah's father and forces Karen to take the poison when she insists. Um, Karen leaves with the footage of the house where she dies before the cult can minister the into themselves. They have to arrive there to the ceremony. During the incident, the cult leader members all die and the present Sarah reveals that the cult members had possessed the documentary filmmakers, which is in Jim possessing Ed Neil nails Maggie. Oh, okay. Because I know it didn't look like him at all. He nails Maggie. Because this is the two. At the very end, like, they go after Jessica Alba. And that the, the whole, like, she's having a dream when she's there. And then she gets, like, crucified to the tree. And I'm like, man, this is really fucked up and really fucking stupid. It's like, but, and then Matt leaves later on this film, which I didn't even know he even left. But we'll see in a minute. But, 
Neil has made a tree despite his protest. Their father did not know about the antidote. The police arrived with Matt only to be killed by the cult members. Neil who now possesses their bodies too. Jim announces his plan to feed upon the souls of the rest of the world. That's the very end of the fucking film. They're all there, and then when Matt got there, he sees that the girl was, uh, Matt, uh, Sarah was there as a grown up there in that same spot. Oh, they're not dead. He'll bring it back. That's your stuff. And I basically told you the whole plot from the Wikipedia page, but really, it don't care a fuck. It sucked, and, and it just really just, I mean, it made me, I, I was just wanting to watch something good. You know, I should have did that. This, I'm kind of pissed off at myself for picking this fucking damn movie. Because I picked up a movie that I should have picked, Legend of Hell House. It was on Netflix, and I should have picked that out. I should have, but now, but oh well. It's a rant, it's a piece of shit film, and I don't really care. I mean, it's just back and forth. Maybe it's because of me watching at night, but I didn't care. I wanted some random film to watch. I mean, let's check out the fucking uh, marketing release. Oh, it doesn't show. I mean, you know what? The, 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 that's what I need. The one star I got. That's all it cares. But I did not really give a fuck about the veil. At first, I thought it was going to be very interesting and everything, but the kills and then Sarah and all the fucking people did not give two shits about. But I don't know, but I'm already going almost 12 minutes here, 11, 22. Um, I'm STS here. Uh, thank you if you guys have watched this simple, this simple rant from Simple Review, my Simple Review series. The Veil, 2016 too. So this is the second 2016 film that I fucking pissed on. Uh, I, I pissed on a major fucking box office bomb, a bot, which was the fucking Gods of Egypt, and then this piece of shit. Right here. I'm STS. Thank you for watching this simple review. If you even survived to watch this 12 minutes piece of shit review. I'm STS. Welcome to the simple review. Bye bye. I just said welcome, but I'll see you later for the next movie. The next movie I'm going to watch Legend of Ale House. Because I, I need to watch a good horror movie.